Hey gang, in today's video I'm going to show you a very simple circuit. It's 555 timer based and what it's for is for driving ignition coils. You can use the circuit for testing ignition coils or you can use the circuit to drive an ignition coil for a high voltage experiment. For this demonstration I'll be using the 7 amp hour sealed lead acid battery. The ignition coil I picked up at an auto parts store and I looked for the cheapest one that was available and it happened to be for a 67 Ford Mustang. I paid around $17.50 for that coil. When I demonstrate I'm going to also give you some current readings to show you the current draw from the battery. I'm going to be swapping out different capacitors to change the frequency which the coil operates at. You're going to see changes in the spark as I change the capacitor value. I'm also going to use the digital meter on a frequency setting to probe the 555 timers output which leads to the MOSFETs gate. The first thing I would like to do is give you a close-up of the circuit. I put it together on a prototype board. You're also going to notice I have jumper wires going to the board. I left off one capacitor, the capacitor which determines the frequency at which the coil will operate. I'm going to substitute different values. I have a bunch of them here, maybe five or six. And you're going to see how the spark varies based on different capacitor values. It is very important that the MOSFET has a large enough heat sink to dissipate heat. The first capacitor we're going to be using is a 0.1 microfarad, a 100N, or a 104 cap. This is going to give the largest spark, very close to 1 inch, and it's also going to be the lowest frequency of all the capacitors. The higher the value, the lower the frequency. And the lower the value of the capacitor, the higher the frequency will be. I'm going to give you a closer look over here, and I'm going to turn the switch on. This wire here is nothing more than a ground. It's connected to the negative terminal on the battery. And this is the power supply coming from the board. Okay, let me turn it on. Very close to an inch. I could smell ozone that was generated from the arcing. The next thing we're going to do is probe the resistor leading to the gate of the MOSFET and take a look at what the frequency is using the 104 cap. Common is connected to ground. The probe will be touched to the gate of the MOSFET. Here we go. And you can see it was right around 400 hertz. Now as the value of the capacitor goes lower and the frequency goes higher, I notice the gap must be closer. So let's move to the next one. And we're going to be doing a 0.05 microfarad because this one here was a 0.1. Let's pop that in. Okay, let's take a look at this one. And you can hear the sound change. up to over 600 hertz. 
Let's switch to a different value again. Now this is a 333. And let's turn it on. See it's too far away. Take a reading. And you can see that was around 1.3 to 1.4 kilohertz. Let's try a different value now. Let's try a 103. Okay, let's power it back up. And I'm also going to have to move this closer. You hear the noise it's making. Turn it off, pull this a little closer to make it connect. And we should be good then, let's see, let's try, let's try that. Let's take a reading. Right here. Now we're around 3.1 to 3.2 kilohertz. And you can see how much higher the frequency was using that capacitor. Be sure to quickly touch the heat sink just to make sure it's not getting too hot. This one runs very warm, but never hot enough that I can't touch it. All right, the last one we're going to be trying is a 1000 pico, which is a 0.001 microfarad or a 102 cap. It's a very small space now. Let me turn it on and take a reading. Nineteen point four kilohertz. Pretty high. Let's see how much current the circuit draws. Let's switch this over to here. And put that to twenty amp. Connect this in series. And let's see what kind of current we're drawing. Here we go. And around 4.5 to 5 amps. So the one I'm going to be leaving in there for my projects is going to be a 0 0.05. Let's try it again. Separate it a little bit as usual, back to there. And one more close-up look. Here we go. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.